Well, also joining us on the show is Rahul Ishwar, who's an author and activist. Uh, uh, debating this important issue tonight is also Professor Dinesh Vashne, who's a CPI leader. Uh, Professor Vashne, coming to you first. I want your reaction on what Justice Indu Malhotra said, because I'm not drawing a conclusion from that short excerpt that has gone viral. But she does make a reference to the communist governments. Look, what Justice Indu Malhotra has said, she, should, she had been a justice, she should know. It is not the only the temples in the Kerala, including the, there are so many temples in the country ruled by, ruled by the various governments of India, including the BJP government, including the other political party government. Hmm. We are of the opinion, these, these temples, you have seen what has happened in the Ram Mandir Trust recently, what, a, what level of corruption is there, the people are fighting each other. Therefore, we, I, we believe that there is a there should be a trust, and trust must have the government nominees. This, this is what it is there in Tamil Kerala. This mm -hmm. is what there in the Jammu and Kashmir. This is what there in Tamil Nadu, Palin Swami Temple or any other temple. Mm -hmm. What uh, Mr. Swami, uh, Dr. Swami has uh, just said, there are four large temples. I don't understand. When temples are visited by the people of the state or the people of the India, how do you say that they are the private property? No, the government no, no. of these. Uh, the government of the states, the respective states, has to provide the public facilities, the public other, the, the, the security and other I arrangements. Think, I think, Professor Vashni, the debate is not over personal versus public nature of temples. The debate is it's rather about the nature. active management, the Shabiyat rights, exactly. when it comes to the worship at the temples. Exactly. That's the debate. Exactly. Never ever the worship matters has been uh, intervened by the trust or the governing councils of the Tamil. Never ever. We have never okay. got a complaint. Rahul, uh, please come into the discussion. Can, uh, I, the can I point out one thing? Yes, can please, I, go, can, please I point, go Can I point out two things? One, mm. it was a blatant intervention by the leftist government in Shabarimala, which we saw. They wanted to deem in and detain the temple, but devotees resisted, and at the end of the day, we won. And please remember who is Justice Hindu Balhotra. is one of the most reputed, balanced judges in our Indian judiciary. Our Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, went on to take her name and applaud her for the courage of that judgment. Hmm. Against four senior male judges, Hindu Malhotra Ji stood her ground. And at the end of the day, Hindu Malhotra Ji's judgment on Shabrimala proved to be true. So she is a person of great ethical courage. And we arranged a reception for her in Kerala. People like Madhusudan and Poti and devotees arranged. And she was talking in a very light manner to the devotees, saying that the epi to the far left kind of people are trying to take over the management of the temple. Mm -hmm. And please remember, what we are demanding is just a simple thing. Just like our Christian brothers have a right over their church, just like our Muslim brothers have a right over their mosque, we Hindus need to have a right over our temples. Mm -hmm. This is guaranteed under Article 25 and 26 of Indian Constitution. This mm -hmm. is our fundamental right. And just like every community is having a right of their own, their own worshiping place, we need to have. Government can be in a facilitator role, but government should not intervene and take over the temple. Mm -hmm. And please remember, India got freedom in 1947, but this British government attitude of temple yeah. being under state government has still not been liberated. Even after 75 years of independence, you know, our temples are still under the government and our gods or deities are still inside some kind of a, you know, a government custody. So the only request is Article 25 and 26 should be put into action. Our fundamental right of governing, administrating, our own places of worship should be guaranteed. Believers, devotees, deity, they should come to the temple. And please remember, government has not created any temple. It is the devotees and the devotion towards the deity that has created temples. So the ownership, the control should go to the devotees and devotees should have the primary right in saying... Rahul, also, also respond to the point that Professor Vashni was making in terms of the feared corrupt, uh, corruption that can happen in temple boards and trusts it, if it, there is it, no it government oversight. If there's it no can, government, it can ha it, no, no, it can happen anywhere. Please remember, governments are some of the most, I mean, with due respect, some of the governments are the most corrupt bodies in the entire world. <laughs> we have seen such huge, massive corruption camps. If there is corruption inside temple church or most, we need transparency, we need people punished who are there. But please remember, it cannot be a protest and a mask. Uh, to take over the temples. And this is only a mask and a guise to take over the temples. And Supreme Court also in the Tamil Nadu temple case has pointed out that corruption cannot be a pretext to take over temple or mismanagement Professor cannot be Vashe, a mask to take if over If different the communities across the uh, country, whether it's uh, the Muslim community or the Christian community or various hundreds of sects and uh, you know different religious ethos surviving in India can manage their own religious affairs, why this special love reserved for the majority community? This is the biggest fraud of the logic. Okay. Explain that to me. Logical fraud. 
all the Muslim mosques and the Muslim properties in religious matters are being governed by the work board and the work board has the government nominees. Okay. The church has their governing council since historical background. And their, their governing council of a diff very different nature. We have not heard the corruption in the churches. We have heard the corruption sir, in the other places. Sir, with it's utmost, sir, with utmost right, respect, church, are you church, saying, church, are you saying the church, level, church, the church, level church. of interference or oversight really that a government church, has in a wakf board is actually comparable to the ma manner in which the government almost controls the temples? Are you really equating no. the two? I am not unaware or yes. I am not ignorant of the government nominees on the Waqf properties. They are there in the Waqf board uh, under the specific act which has been passed by the government of India. But the interference pertaining to the matters of Hindu faith and temples is much, much wider in scope. You tell, you tell me, has anybody stopped the prayers or anything in any temple of the country? Nobody. Sabrimala temple, what is, as Aulishwar has said, the Supreme Honorable Supreme Court said there should be equity of between male and female to pray the God. They said no, women cannot pray of all ages. How can you allow the 21st century or 22nd century this nonsense that women are not equal to men? What sir, is wrong if the communist government So while as a woman, while as a woman, even women. when the Shabri Mala debate was going on, I have always supported the right of every woman to enter Shabri Mala. Yes. But this, but, 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 that also opens up Pandora's box for all religions and communities across the country. And if okay. we have that stand on Shabri Mala, there is a need for a wider debate for the scope of personal laws versus the fundamental rights. Then Article 14 and 21 should apply over all personal laws and ethos in this country. Then all, that's also an okay. argument to make. Uh, okay, yeah. I come to that. Always the laws are formed as per the customs and traditions of the respective religions. Nobody has objected to that in any country of the world. As far as uniform civil code is concerned, that depends on the historical background of the society and the countries and the regions and the country hmm. and the nations. Hence, okay. you have to understand this thing in philosophical terms. You cannot understand only in the legal terms. You see, well, you, you well may, Professor you Navashne, I am, I am very sorry I'm interrupting you there. I'm short of time, but this is a debate that should happen in the larger public domain, a debate that has been raked up by various political figures, including the present Karnataka Chief Minister who spoke about it. And of course, Uttarakhand has already done, done that to a great extent. Rahul Ishwar and Professor Dinesh Vashne, thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. We